Citadel Gray Line is back on the air. This is the show that covers all things Citadel Bulldogs and more. John Rawl joined by Jeff Hartzell of the Charleston Post and Courier. We've got a very special guest that's set to join us here in just a moment. His name is Luke Morrow, and he is the voice of the Citadel Bulldogs. And we're going to have a great time today learning a little bit more about what goes into what a Citadel broadcast is all about on the Citadel Sports Network. We welcome your calls here at 843-779-8496. That's how you can get in touch with us. If you've got a question or comment for Luke Morrow, voice of the dogs, we would love to have him answer that. And and just a great thing to have him here on the show. Later in the program, Jeff and I are going to look back at the very disappointing loss to Western Carolina, a loss that now sends the Bulldogs to two and five on the year and things are not looking all that good in Charleston. We'll discuss that. We'll discuss what's ahead for the Bulldogs. Some positive news out of the Citadel campus this week. We got the best basketball player in the SOCON. At least that's what the pundits have declared. We'll talk about all that and more, but first up, let me welcome in Jeff Hartzell, and let me welcome in Luke Morrow first because there's Jeff. Hello, Jeff. Welcome back into the Gray Line. Hey, John. Great to be with you. Good to see you, Luke. Yes, and we'll bring in Luke now. Again, Luke is the voice of the Bulldogs. Yeah, thanks for having me. Good to see you guys and uh, good to be here. All right, great. And Luke is a very busy fellow. Not only is he the voice of the Bulldogs, he's got a local radio show in the Charleston area that he's very, very busy prepping for right now. So we won't keep you any longer than we have. But Luke, you're the you're the, the newcomer here to our show, but you're no newcomer to Citadel Sports. You've been on this job now. Was This is your, what, third season, fourth season? Yeah, fourth year, which is hard to believe, but it's been a lot of fun. Uh, it's always a, a great school to work with, the programs, the coaches. Everyone's been great. Obviously, uh, this time of year, you're hoping for a few more wins to broadcast, but it's, it's been enjoyable, and it's been a fast now three-plus years here uh, on the gig, and uh, happy to be be able to be referred to the voice of the Bulldogs. That always yeah. sounds nice. So it's really and, good. And he's not just the football voice. You're also very busy with basketball. You do a select number of baseball games also. Mm-hmm. And we're going to learn a little bit more about uh, your background, how you got to Charleston, and maybe some tricks of the trade coming from the voice of the Bulldogs. So let me just go ahead and dive into the fun part. Where are you from and how did you get to Charleston? Yeah, I'm from Connecticut originally, and I uh, went to school in Connecticut, and when I graduated, I got into minor league baseball, and I spent seven years working in minor league baseball, and that took me, well, I worked in Connecticut, I worked in New York, Florida, and eventually this opportunity came about now going back, you know, just over three years ago, and it seemed like a great opportunity to be able to work with the Citadel and also to be able to have the, the radio show as well here on ESPN Radio in Charleston, so that combination Seemed great. Minor league baseball was a blast, but it's it's a real grind. And after seven years, uh, it was time to mix it up a little bit. And uh, happy that I was able to do that with this opportunity and come here and now work with the Citadel and ESPN Radio Charleston here for the last, as we said, three plus years. So it, it's been great. I've been in the South now for about seven years. I love it. And uh, don't <laughs> and you're not going back, back north. Cold in the winters. Yeah. Exactly. I plan <laughs> to stay down here as long as I can. All right, Jeff Hartzell. Questions for Luke. Oh, you caught me off guard. That's all right. John, uh, Luca, what minor league team did you work for? Yeah, I bounced around. Um, you know, I worked for uh, the different organizations that I worked for, the Minnesota Twins, the New York Mets, the Cincinnati Reds, Chicago Cubs. So teams that actually – I had a bad streak in minor league baseball where I was always in the final year with uh, a team before they changed their name. So – you know, I was with the New Britain Rockets, who then became the Hartford Yard Goats. I was with the Binghamton Mets, who then became the Binghamton Rumble Ponies after I left. I, be, I was with the Daytona Cubs, who became the Daytona Tortugas. Point being, a lot of the teams that I actually work for have different names now, uh, and you would think they don't even exist. But those were the organizations that I worked for in minor league baseball, the Twins, uh, Reds, Cubs, Mets. And uh, it was enjoyable. All the organizations were great to work with. Moved around the country a little bit, uh, up and down the East Coast. And uh, minor league baseball, like I said, it's a real grind, but it's the type of thing that when you're doing it, um, you take pride in the long hours that you have to work and the few days off that you have. It's like a a fraternity, and it's enjoyable until, I guess, you get out of it and you look back and you think, like, man, you know, I I much prefer having the weekends off and having some summer time to myself. So it was a lot of fun. Uh, I I would certainly, you know, always be interested in 
going back someday to minor league baseball, if that opportunity ever presented itself, I, I love that industry. But uh, what I'm doing now is certainly um, uh, has, it's been great as well. Had you done much football before coming to the Citadel? Yeah, I started doing high school football in Connecticut. That's where I got my start on uh, radio stations up there, commercial radio stations. And then I was working with Stetson University on the side down in Florida while working at minor league baseball. And I was there, you know, the voice of the Hatters and doing um, basketball and football for them on the radio. And so that was my first uh, that was my the first time I started to do college football, and I was with them for four years before coming here to the Citadel. But people always ask what my favorite sport to, to broadcast is, and I, I always say whatever season I'm, I'm in the middle of. But the great thing about football is that it is newer for me, at least at the college level. I, I have a lot more experience doing professional baseball and even just basketball. Uh, football has been the one sport that I have done, and just, of course, 12 games a year compared to you know, 140 in minor league baseball. So I've done far fewer football broadcasts than anything else. And that's why I still appreciate like the newness of doing a football game. And there's only one a week and there's only 11 or 12 a year. And it's still uh, something special about just having that ability to do football broadcasts because uh, it hasn't, you know, throughout a season, it's not as common as the other sports. This is quite different. Yeah, go ahead, Jeff. Go ahead, and then I'll, I'll, not, well, I was just going to throw in everybody. We're talking to Luke Morrow, the voice of the Bulldogs here on the Citadel Gray Line, and we're presented in part by IPS Packaging and BigRedPalmetto.store. And BigRedPalmetto.store, when they're with us each week, they're able to provide a knob knowledge question. And this week's knob knowledge question, we're going to go ahead and ask it because it has something to do with the broadcast booth of the Citadel. And if you text the correct answer to 843-779-8496, if you text that answer correctly to us right now, we'll get you a $25 gift certificate to BigRedPalmetto.store. So listen up. Here is your knob knowledge question that's got something to do with the Citadel Sports Radio Network. We want to know what current Charleston meteorologist, he's a TV meteorologist, what current Charleston TV meteorologist was once in the broadcast booth of the Citadel Radio Network. If you text me that answer, 843-779-8496, we'll get you a $25 gift certificate your way. Luke Morrow, I don't want you to answer it, but do you know the answer to that question? I believe I do, but I okay. won't say anything. All right, good deal. We'll take that. And I know Jeff Hartzell knows the answer to that one, but it goes back uh, a way. I, I do. Mm -hmm. Okay. It goes back a way. It goes back a ways, but uh, I was trying to come up with a good radio network trivia question that people could answer. Because, Luke, one of the reasons we have you on here is you've been here now in your fourth season, and so we want to congratulate you on, on sticking around and being with us through the fun. But the Citadel radio job, and this is a compliment to both the Citadel and Kirkman Broadcasting for hiring such great talent it in some ways has been a revolving door over the last 25, 30 years. There's been a lot of Luke Morrow's come in and go, often to better jobs, often to bigger schools, and that's a really cool thing that's happened. But Luke, now in his fourth year, I guess we, we, we got you still around here, and that's a great thing. But yeah, you, you inherited a job. There's been some really good folks ahead of you. Yeah, yeah, there have been. It's been a uh, it's it's been a, a great position for broadcasters over the years, and it's part of what really intrigued me about the opportunity to begin with. And we have a you know we have a good radio network uh, for football throughout the state. It was a little bit larger pre-pandemic. Uh, we were on ten stations at one point. Now we're down to I think it's six. I, I should know off the top of my head. I believe it's six throughout the state. But you know when I first got here, we were on all, all corners of the state of South Carolina, and we were throughout the state and all sorts of different networks. So, you know, and when you say the Citadel, obviously that, that means something special, especially in this state, but even throughout uh, the, the, the South or throughout the country. So to be able to, you know, work with a, a school in these programs like this has been a great opportunity. And I know for many before me, it was a good stepping stone for them on, on their way in their career. So, um, you know, big shoes to, to fill over the years when I uh, arrived and continue to do so. But it's it's been a great gig and uh, great people and a great school, great programs to work with here. And your your job there not only includes the broadcast, but you have to do some of the sales stuff. You also have to do the weekly coaches show, and I've got some 
some video of, of you in action hosting that. This year, congratulations. Y'all have a great place. You're doing this from Big John's, which has now been reopened in downtown Charleston. We've got some video of you and Coach Thompson there at a recent Citadel broadcast there of the Coach's Show. Luke Morrow hosting this with Coach Thompson. This actually airs on the radio in Charleston. It's it, it it's kind of neat. I think you're on the big the big signal, the ninety eight point nine ESPN for the coaches show, correct? Yes, yeah, that's correct. Now tonight, because of the World Series, we actually do have to move it, so this works out well to get that message out. Uh, it'll be on one hundred two point one FM in the area tonight, uh, which is where we broadcast the actual ball game. We have to carry the World Series tonight on ESPN. Uh, but yes, yeah, typically it's on ninety eight point nine, and we talk digital football every Wednesday from seven to eight. And your broadcasts are on The City, which is 102.1, which has a, a great FM signal there in the Charleston, Mount Pleasant area. And I'll, I'll help you. I think I'm right on this. Citadel Radio broadcast can still be found in Sumter on the affiliates there. And you're also on The Point, which is in Columbia at 1470 a.m. and 100.7 FM. Kevin Cohen's great little station there is carrying Citadel football I think that about covers it. We lost a great affiliate several years ago in the upstate. If y'all can help us in the upstate, we had a great affiliate, AM660, 92.9, and we've got a lot of Citadel fans that want to hear Luke's play-by-play. Maybe you can get in touch with Luke and find a way to get us back on in that great corner of the state of South Carolina so people can keep hearing that Citadel Bulldog message. Yeah, absolutely. And and the the good thing too is of course with uh, nowadays you can you can stream it online as well from anywhere in the world. We always have listeners from other countries, you know, alum uh, that listen every Saturday and we now have a, a free app as well that you can download in the App Store for the Citadel and the City. You would download the app for the City. Just search the City Charleston, I believe in the App Store should bring it up and you can listen from anywhere in the world through our free app as well on your phone. So, it's always great to be on Terrestrial Radio. We would love to have as many affiliates as we can. But if you're out of state, if you're out of the country, if you're somewhere where you can't get it on your radio, you can always listen online and on your phone. And, of course, we have many that do that uh, every week. So we always appreciate everybody tuning in one way or another to Citadel Football every Saturday. I wanted to ask Luke about his broadcast partner, Lee Glaze. It would be hard to find somebody with a more extensive knowledge and perspective on Citadel Football <laughs> than Lee. Yeah, Lee's great. Uh, he's great to work with. You know, in my first three years, I had three different broadcast partners, and Lee now is the first to come back. So I guess I'm very difficult to deal with, uh, but Lee's back here in uh, year four, our second year together. And, uh, yeah, he's excellent. I mean, obviously he played for the program. He's in the Hall of Fame. He's been with the Citadel. He did the job a few years ago before taking a little break and now coming back. So uh, when it comes to analyzing the offense, or just what it means to be part of this Citadel football program, some of the things that these players have to go through, or what it's like to play in these different stadiums and these different teams, uh, Lee's very good. And he's polished, too, um, in getting the, the message across and working. Because, you know, radio broadcasts can be difficult. TV is all about the analysts. You have all the time in the world to make your point and say what you want to say. On radio, it is, better or worse, about the play-by-play guy having to t- explain what's going on. So he's very good at uh, being insightful and doing it you know, succinctly in between the plays and uh, a good travel partner for these long road trips. And yeah, it's been, it's been great to work with Lee and have him in the booth. He's a great source of, of knowledge for these broadcasts. My favorite part of your pregame is when you ask Lee about his days playing against that week's opponent, you know, and his memories of uh, what the team did against, you know, Western Carolina or Furman or Wofford when he was playing. I always find that very interesting. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, we do that the second segment of the pregame show. It started when uh, Coach Cal McCombs was in the booth with us my first year here, and he would always tell these stories in the in the car and whenever I would meet with them. And I said, we got to do this on air. You have so many great stories. <laughs> and so now with Lee, we're able to continue that as well. And I always love these athletes can remember the details so well. And for mm-hmm. Lee, not to age him, but his career, you know, that was going back to the early 80s. And he could tell you, he could give you a play-by-play of his game's we were just at Furman two weeks ago. He was explaining about this great catch he made in the corner of the end zone and how because of the fans, he couldn't get it on the camera. So no one has ever seen this catch. But he was explaining how he got his toes in and the situation. You know, they know everything that has happened in the game from, from 40 years ago, the very little details. So, yeah, I, I always enjoy that as well. Um, I, I like that we did that with Coach McCombs, and we can bring it back with Lee now. The details they can provide, the, 
the memories they can share about these opponents, these games from years past. I think it is important, especially for a program like this, where every time I, I run into Citadel fans, you know, they, they talk about things from the past, the history. It's a very uh, passionate fan base with a lot of history in this program. And people like to, you know, remember or think about that. So for Lee to be able to provide those memories, uh, I appreciate you saying that. I, I, I think it's a good part of the pregame show as well. So I enjoy doing that. Luke, you're the current voice of the Bulldogs. As we have kind of mentioned, there have been many through the years. One guy that was voice of the Bulldogs that kind of hung around Charleston and hung around Kirkman Broadcasting has been or was a part of the Citadel Radio Network in recent years. Sadly, Ted Byrne died in 2019. Jeff, you and I were there in Chattanooga. I guess it was the last game he probably was a part of. Uh, Luke, what, what was it like to work with, with Ted and, and kind of the, the, the legacy that he leaves behind? He, he, he died, sadly, just before coronavirus, so some people probably have not even thought about that because of all the madness that the world's gone through in the last year and a half. But your thoughts on Ted Byrne? Yeah, that was a, a terrible thing uh, when it happened, when we got word of his passing. Um, and it was the type of deal that when you get the word, because, you know, it was a sudden passing, unfortunately, for Ted and um, you look back and, and for me thankful that I got to have that football season with him because that was his you know he came in back into the booth with me that year and uh, that was the only season we worked together on the Citadel broadcast so to be able to have those experiences and like I was saying earlier about the travel I mean some of these trips are long you're in the car for hours uh, you go out to eat with each other of course you spend the whole weekend together on those trips so to be able to just spend that time with him um, before, unfortunately, you know, the untimely passing that, of course, you, you, you didn't know was coming. You look back and you appreciate and are grateful for those opportunities. And to have him in the booth was great. Um, obviously, he had a great history and career with the Citadel. You can go hear some of his broadcasts still on YouTube. Um, and so to get him back into the booth again, to have that opportunity before he unfortunately, you know, left us too soon was uh in hindsight i mean it was great it was great to have him uh going back to what i was saying about coach mccombs and lee and the, you know even the stories he had and the, the history he could share and he knew that offense very well in that program so it was great to have him in the booth and then i know um one saturday i think it was at the elon game when i had some car trouble while we were traveling and so jeff was able to help us out and actually bring ted home uh, back to charleston while i got my car <laughs> figured out in north carolina that was an interesting weekend um, so thank you again to Jeff, but, you know, to be able to look back and say, oh, you know, it was great to have those, those memories, those opportunities with Ted before, unfortunately, his, his passing that, uh, left us here at Kirkman Broadcasting, um, left us all with a I, hole in our hearts, of course. It's funny you mentioned that, Luke. I, at the time, of course, I'm like, yeah, Ted, I'll, I'll give you a ride. <laughs> and then after he passed, I was so grateful that we had that time together because I hadn't, I'd spent some time with Ted in the early days, but not lately. And so we were able to catch up on that car ride home. And of course, after he passed, I was so grateful that we had had that time together. So funny how things work out. And uh, we, we still miss Ted today. We sure do. Luke, we know you got to get ready for your lunchtime show on ESPN Charleston. Tell me what people can listen to when you're not on the Citadel radio network. You do have this daily gig in Charleston. What is it? And tell us how we can get involved with it. Yeah, it keeps me busy. I'm on the air 12 to 3, Monday through Friday on ESPN Radio Charleston here. So just as uh, I was saying before, if you're in the area, of course, if you're in the low country, you can listen, 98.9 FM. If you're not, we have listeners from all over. Again, going back to we have listeners throughout the world. I always appreciate people tuning in from other states and countries. You can always stream it online, charlestonsportsradio.com, through our free app as well. Just search ESPN Charleston in the App Store. Tune in radio. You can program your smart speaker, whatever. The show is called the Morrow Midday Show, and you can always get to me on Twitter as well, at Morrow Middays, or online. Head over to charlestonsportsradio.com, click on our show page. You can leave a comment for the show there. That's how we interact with our listeners. Of course, you can always call as well. But 12 to 3, Monday through Friday, talking about everything going on in the sports world, and uh, it's always a blast. And I'm sure you throw in a little Citadel talk in there from time to time. Does that kind of uh, does that, does that tick off the Gamecock and Tiger fans out there? <laughs> No, you know, people appreciate uh, the, the Citadel talk, and um, we're probably the only ones here uh, locally that, that do it on, on ESPN Radio, been happy to do so. But, um, you know, right now it's a down year for all the football in the state, so I guess all the fan bases, we're all kind of in this together, hoping for some more wins here the rest of this football season in South Carolina. 
Well, Luke, we can't thank you again for coming on here. We know not only is it a busy time of year football, but we're about to kick into basketball. So it's that special time of year where you've got to do double double duty. What's, uh, I guess, in, in conclusion with you, what's a week like where you got both a football game and a basketball game? What, what do your days look like? Yeah, that's the obviously the busiest time of the year. And then, of course, the radio show as well. So a lot of prep work. You know, football is the one thing. It's what I love about football, but it also can be a little bit of a pain with football. Is that that's the one score. The reason why they only play once a week is because, of course, us broadcasters, we need the whole week to prepare. So uh, <laughs> and that's a, a week-long process for football. And then you factor in potentially two basketball games. And there's only about a two-week overlap. But, you know, potentially two basketball games during the same week, travel, doing the radio show. So a lot of prep work thinking about citadel sports or getting ready for those broadcasts really around the clock but it's uh it's something i always enjoy um, i was talking with coach thompson about it last week about that that prep of course you love game day but you also have to love the the build up to, to game day and I, I love you know doing the prep work coming up with the notes finding the stats learning the other teams so a lot of work that time of year coming up in a couple of weeks but it's very enjoyable and i, I always look forward to it it's great to have all the citadel sports going on and be able to broadcast them and let me brag on Luke and the Citadel Sports Network as a guy who's kind of worked in radio a few years. They do a great professional job for an FCS school. This Citadel Network is among the best. They've got multiple stations in multiple towns. It's a professional product, and you should definitely listen in. And you consider you should also consider a sponsorship on the Citadel Sports Network. So, Luke, do you have a, a good way for people to contact you if they want to get involved with your network? Yes, uh, you can email me, uh, Luke at KirkmanBroadcasting.com, or you can give us a call right here at the, uh, the radio station, which we have all sorts of different phone numbers you can find online, but one of them is 843-721-9500, and you can always get in touch with us that way if uh, you're interested in, in doing anything with us from that standpoint but uh, certainly appreciate the, the plugs and appreciate you guys having me and you're also just to also pick on you you're also repping the uh throwback logo now have they not given you one of the brand new logo hats for you to wear on the citadel coaches show exam for example no, no they haven't i brought this up before uh you know coach thompson shows up people <laughs> from the school show up they have the new logo and i'm stuck with uh if you could yeah if you can see here i got, yeah. I got all the old stuff I'm i know hat since I've, been, I've been here i wear this every week for four years it's disgusting so uh, if anybody's listening over there at the citadel uh, help me out get me some of this new cool merch that uh, they're not sharing with me and i've got that same that hat you're wearing is made by nike which is not the official apparel manufacturer <laughs> of the citadel it feels good, but you would look a lot better if you had that new logo on there. But you look good anyway, and we sure appreciate you coming on. Luke Morrow, the voice of the Bulldogs. Best of luck, and we'll catch up with you again. I appreciate it. Appreciate you having me, and I uh, look forward to the game on Saturday. And uh, for you guys, you don't need to hear it from me, but keep up the great work. Oh, well, thank you very much. Luke Morrow, we appreciate it. And uh, you got to get on to another show, so good luck with that. All right, Jeff, we are going to talk now about what happened last week with Luke. Uh, we appreciate him coming on again. Jeff, I, I, I'm at a loss for words. Maybe you can uh, be more prophetic. Do, do we have to talk about it? <laughs> yeah, we do. In fact, uh, we got to talk about it. And if you don't mind, give me a courtesy nudge down with your camera so we can see a little bit more of you real quick. But uh, yes, it, it was not the way we thought it was. And, and frankly, the defense really was one of the stories of this game, the defense or lack thereof. Yeah, one of the more baffling aspects of the game. Uh, of course, they, they ended up losing 45 to 24 to a winless Western Carolina team. And the first quarter, the first quarter and a half was really a low point uh, for Citadel football in recent years. Uh, they were behind 28 to three right off the jump against a team that came in 0 and 6. So there's <laughs> not much good you can say about that. And especially after the defense had actually played pretty well against Furman, uh, except for, you know, two plays when Furman scored long touchdowns. But uh, Western Carolina just sliced and diced them with a backup quarterback, which uh, makes it even worse. So, uh, yeah, not a good day for Citadel defense, and the offense was not able to answer uh, enough to keep them in the game. They did have a chance uh, in the second half. They pulled within a touchdown and had the ball, a chance to uh, maybe tie it up. 
but that drive uh, petered out at about the 30 yard line and then Western put it away with two late touchdowns. So uh, not a good day for Citadel football and, and not a good season so far. For Citadel no, 45, 31 and the Citadel with a late score. This game was more like a three touchdown deficit and it is a, a rough time. The Citadel now two and five on the year with only four games left. It looks like, Jeff, we're staring at best at a roughly 500 season, and uh, it looks like we could end up with a losing season, something that I know is not what anybody wanted to have as this season started. No, it's not. And, uh, you know, they've, they've had a couple of games, uh, the Furman game that they could have won. Uh, but, you know, uh, it, it's hard to think of anything positive coming out of uh, of this Western Carolina game. you I had the feeling going in that Western Carolina was due for a breakthrough. Uh, they they have a new coach, Kerwin Bell, who's a proven offensive coach. Uh, he's proven he can score a lot of points during his career at Jacksonville and Valdosta. Uh, so uh, it was just a matter of if their defense could slow somebody down enough. And uh, the Citadel, you know, in my opinion, they've become too easy to defend on defense uh, for opposing defenses. And uh, that's one of the problems uh, that Brent Thompson is going to have to figure out going forward how, is how to vary the attack a little bit. They they did that against VMI with uh, shifting the tackle over, uh, throwing a wrinkle at VMI, and it worked very well in that game, but they haven't been able to come up with anything like that since. And in my opinion, they're just too easy for a pony opposing defenses to scheme against right now. Yeah. The offense already with its own problems. And as outlined here, the defense just went a wall, frankly, in a 45 31 loss to a winless, winless Western Carolina struggling bottom feeder of the SoCon football team. And with this loss, it's not too put it's not too crazy to say the Citadel's right there at the bottom of the SoCon now and uh got a long way to, to try to make this season look somewhat respectable. Well I think every game left with the possible exception of Chattanooga is winnable for the Citadel. As Mercer, Samford uh, Chattanooga and Wofford left on the schedule, not in that order. I'm not sure of the exact order, though Mercer is this week. So uh, in my opinion, every game except possibly Chattanooga is winnable for the Citadel, but they've got to play a lot better uh, uh, than they are right now. Uh, VMI smashed Mercer by 45 to 7, mm -hmm. and the Citadel beat VMI. So you would think, you know, there's some chance for the Citadel against Mercer, but Mercer is, is improved. They have a new coach. I think he's in his second year, and uh, he's also a good offensive coach. So Mercer is improved despite that 45-7 loss to uh, VMI, which has really rebounded well after their loss to the Citadel. Yeah. And the Kedets are back in contention for the SoCon title. The Citadel at home against Mercer this week, on the road in Birmingham against Sanford the following week, then back home for the final home game against Walford, then the season finale is at Chattanooga. Jeff, when I watch NFL, when I watch other networks on the four-letter network, they always give you that percentage breakdown of the percentage to win. So Jeff Hartzell, give me a percentage chance that Jeff Hartzell take on a victory for the Citadel against Mercer, Samford, Wofford, and Chattanooga. Uh, I think they're – Chances against Mercer, Walford, and Sanford are all in the 40 to 50% range. Chattanooga is more like 30. Okay. So you're saying there's a chance. I'm saying there's a chance. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You know, they well, got Jeff... to win all four to have a winning record, obviously, at, at two and five. That would put them at six and five. Uh, in, in Brent Thompson's tenure, they – he won his first 10 games as a Citadel's coach. What a great start that was. And, of course, they finished 10-2 and two that year and won their second straight SOCON title. Since then, they've been a 500 team, essentially, until the COVID season when they went 2-10. and 10. 
uh, in the between the fall and spring. And it's hard it's hard to hold anything that happened last year, last season against any coach. And so, because they played three FBS teams in the fall, right, yeah. including number one Clemson. So, but essentially, since that ten and two season, they've been a five hundred program. And uh, if they can get to that level this year, you know, that would be a good finish to what's been a, a trying season so far. But what happens, Jeff, if they don't win another game the rest of the way and they have this horrible, what would be, I think, two and nine record? What happens as far as the coach? Just period. What happens? He returns next year for the final okay. year of his contract. Okay. Uh, the Citadel traditionally does not let go of coaches before their contract is up. Of course, there's always a first time, you know, rules are made to be broken, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, I would fully be, expect him to be back next year, no matter how they finish this year. Well, that, uh, that unfortunately, Jeff, what you're saying, we've reported on. I mean, this is not anything new, but a lot of fans, if you tune in to radio shows like this, if you tune in to the Lords of Discipline.net, a lot of fans have about had it with the way this program struggled. Well, uh, it's not a good season, and it wasn't a good season last year. So there's, there were reasons uh, for what happened last year. Well, let's, reasons- we can throw last year. Last year doesn't even count. So we're talking right. 17, 18, 19, and now 21. We've been an average football team, and this year it could very well be a much below average football team. Well, I was going to say there were reasons for what happened last fall and spring a lot of those reasons are gone now. So, um, yeah, it's uh, they've definitely fallen below expectations and below a, uh, a standard of uh, performance that any any fan of any school's program would want to see. Yeah. So, except for that BMI game. Yeah. It's... So, uh, yeah, and one thing that has happened is this year is some injuries. Uh, that are starting to pile up. Uh, Jalen Adams, the quarterback, and Willie Eubanks, the All-American linebacker, did not finish the Western Carolina game. Their status for this week is questionable. So uh, if they are without both of those guys, it's really going to be a struggle against a improved Mercer team. Yeah, and kind of echoing a little bit about what I was saying, Jeff, I got multiple texts over the weekend after that game and it's just it's something I brought up back in the spring on this show, and I'll bring up here. And, um, I mean, it's just a fact. What school – this is what I texted back to one of my buddies. What school in America allows coaches to be on the job five years and have average or below average seasons? That's the case for all three major sports at the Citadel. So what's your question to me? It's not a question. It's just what schools, uh, I would assume we could look at some of the major schools, but you know we've got three sports that are have been really struggling. And it's not just a one- or two-year thing. And in, in, in almost every case, it's been a five-year thing. And the, the answer is, well, they're under contract. They're going to stay. That, that may be the case at the Citadel, but that doesn't happen at most schools. If you don't perform – It doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, Texas, Texas Tech just fired a coach that had a five-and-three record yeah. this year. So it doesn't happen at a lot of schools. And uh, I think at the Citadel, it's it's for two reasons. One, it's the Citadel where uh, some idea of integrity is supposed to be important and they're going to serve out the, you know, they're going to serve out the contract. And uh, the other reason is money. Yeah. They can't afford to buy out, you know, coaches contracts, even though their coaches are not making, you know, million dollars or anything. Uh, so yeah, those are, those are the two reasons. And when things go south, uh, they're going to go south until that contract is up. And, uh, that's just how it is at the Citadel. And most schools, and this is a criticism, not necessarily of the coaches, but of, of the alumni, we don't have those alumni with zillions of dollars floating around to, to help make these changes, to help build half of a football stadium. I don't know why none of our alumni have not struck it big on an oil well somewhere and helped fund the school, but it hasn't happened. 
the Citadel has plenty of rich alumni. Come on. Do now. they? Okay. Well, I'm not one of them, but yeah. maybe maybe one of them's watching this right now. Yeah, I, and I don't know. Uh, I don't know if the Citadel would allow them to put together a pool of money to buy out any coach. Uh, I don't think that's the way they want to operate, which, which is fine, and you know that's respectable in its own in its own right. And uh, so, uh, Citadel's a different place, and that's just one of the things that makes it different. Yeah. And again, we're giving Brent Thompson the, the benefit of the doubt. He might could turn around and win all four of these games and get above 500. That would be great. And I hope I hope he does. We're pulling for him. But uh, most colleges don't have these kind of things going on, and I think money is a big part of it. They don't – I guess alumni out there, if you're complaining or you're not happy, I'm not happy. Uh, well, but I can't do anything about it. Look at the state of football in South Carolina right now. It's not good. Fire Dabo uh, Sweeney. Everything. Is that what you're about to tell me? No. The uh, <laughs> the only team that won last weekend, the only D1 team in the state that won was South Carolina State. Uh, even Coastal lost at App State. But the point being, um, you look at Clemson. They don't take transfers in the transfer portal. That's one of the things that is coming up to bite them right now. Well, at the Citadel, they can take some transfers, but they're not going to take 15 or 17 in a year like Western Carolina did. So that's just one. Clemson is finding out that it's difficult to compete in that environment. And the Citadel has known that for a long time. And that's not a reason or an excuse or anything. That's just a fact of life uh, in, in college sports right now. I didn't know that about Clemson. That That's pretty unusual for a program of that caliber to not be involved in the transfer portal. They have guys leaving, but they don't take guys coming in, uh, or very rarely. But that, I expect that to change, you know, pretty soon. Hmm. Well, again, it's been working pretty good for them, but it, it's a fickle world, and with the money aspect and the the fickle transfers and stuff, we know it's not an easy job being a football coach anywhere. And I guess we're just here on this show venting a little bit or at least i am but uh maybe we'll get it all fixed up fixed up let me remind everybody here that citadel gray line is powered in part by ips packaging and automation that's a name you can trust since 1976 ips packaging and automation has been providing manufacturers and e-commerce companies with the very best packaging products and automation in the industry ips offers a complete line of packaging products from stretch films and 3m tapes to corrugated boxes strapping and equipment automation Based in Fountain Inn, IPS Packaging and Automation will analyze and streamline your current methods to improve your packaging process. Give them a call, 800-277-7007 to learn more or visit them at ipac.com. IPS Packaging and Automation, a proud supporter of Citadel Athletics. And IPS, along with Big Red Palmetto.store, helps present this show all about Citadel Sports. We are a completely independent production. We are not as- affiliated with the Citadel we're fans, but we're not officially affiliated. Therefore, we can be somewhat critical as we're doing right now about what, uh, what's what been happening on the various athletic fields of the Bulldogs. And we would love to have you be part of the show if you would like to perhaps reach out to us for a potential sponsorship. Our number is 843-779-8496. Just give us a call. We'll work up something to get you on as we got a handful of shows left before we say goodbye for 2021. Again, we're presented in part by BigRedPalmetto.store, and that website brings us the knob knowledge question. We had Luke Morrow on earlier, and we had a trivia question asked that we still don't have a correct guess for. So let me go back to last week and tell you the winner, or, or not the winner, we didn't have a correct guess. You're all fired <laughs> because we didn't have a correct winner on knob knowledge. The question was asked, who was the first superintendent of the South Carolina Military Academy? That's when they had the academy with freshmen reporting to Columbia and upperclassmen would go to a place called the Citadel in Charleston. And the first superintendent of the Citadel was Major White. And I don't think we had a single correct guess on that. So you're all going to have to do push-ups on that one. Our trivia question this week, can you tell me, as Luke Morrow was our special guest, the voice of the Bulldogs, what current Charleston meteorologist, a broadcast meteorologist on one of the TV stations there, 
what current TV personality meteorologist-wise in Charleston was once in the broadcast booth of the Citadel Radio Network. And if you can correctly guess that, 843-779-8496 is where you can text that answer to. We'll get you a $25 gift certificate to Big Red Palmetto dot store. All right, Jeff, let's talk a little positive news for Citadel football, specifically Citadel football alumni. We've had our two NFL representatives be in the news in the last few days. Andre Roberts has a new employer, and Dee Delaney made quite an impression for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. How about that? Dee Delaney uh, made his first start for the Buccaneers at cornerback and came up with an interception uh, in the Bucks win last week. I believe it was against the Bears, wasn't it? Yes. So, uh, yeah, a big milestone for D in his career. Of course, he was an All-American cornerback at the Citadel before transferring to Miami for his final season. Actually was out of the league last year and then uh, made the Bucks roster in preseason. And what a great story. That was for D. Delaney, and now he's uh, he's proven he can play uh, uh, starting cornerback in the league. So I think uh, he had an interception. Did you say that? Yes, I did. He had okay, his first sorry. career interception in his first career start at, uh, on defense. Of course, he's he's been a starter on special teams uh, before. So um, yeah, great moment for D. Delaney. And then you mentioned uh, or you alluded to Andre Roberts. He was let go by the Texans but it's signed with the Chargers. So he improved his lot in life quite a bit, going from a losing team to a, a Super Bowl contender, I think, in the Chargers. So what a great career Andre has pieced together, uh, first as a receiver and then making himself over as a all-pro kick returner and still getting it done in the league. And we actually have a couple more guys, right? Maurice Drayton is the special teams coordinator at Green Bay, and he got a shout-out. From his head coach this week, he he said the Packers special teams was the reason they won last week. So a great uh, and special teams has always been kind of an issue uh, in recent years at Green Bay. And it's up to Maurice to get it fixed. And it looks like he's getting that done. And then uh, Noah Dawkins was active for the Jets last week and made a couple of tackles in their game. So actually four uh, Citadel guys getting stuff done in the league right now. And at one point, I don't know where he's hanging out these days, former quarterback Cam Turner was also in the Citadel or in the NFL. <laughs> don't right. want to leave out Stump Mitchell. Stump? Well, we got it. Uh, Citadel's got a bunch of guys. Yeah. Um, Cam Turner is Kyler Murray's quarterback coach. At Arizona? Cardinals. Okay. Yes. And so uh, under uh, Cliff Kingsbury is the head coach. And Cam Turner, uh, who played quarterback and receiver – at the Citadel is the quarterback coach. He was in the news for not a great reason. Uh, he had to sit up, miss a game with COVID uh, recently. So, uh, and so did his head coach, Cliff Kingsbury. But uh, Kyler Murray and the Cardinals, I believe they're the last undefeated team. They are. They're the very NFL. good. It so, must be that quarterback uh, sure coaching. Must be that quarterback coach uh, teaching Kyler Murray all those moves <laughs> <laughs> that he learned at the Citadel. And of he course, did. Stump. Um, Stump still in the league after all these years as well. He's uh, he's got the the whole beard thing going, so uh, making an impression with that as well. Yes, he does. Uh, he's pretty easy to spot on the Cleveland Browns sideline. All those teams uh, all looking really good at this point, and we wish all of our Citadel alumni the best. Whether they're a coach or or they're a player. What a cool deal if we could get another Citadel connection in a Super Bowl like we've seen in past years. All right, Jeff, let's move over from football unless there's anything football else you've got. Well, I just want to mention one thing that Citadel guy folks can look for in the final four games is, of course, freshmen are allowed to play four games, up to four games without losing their red shirt. So I think in these final four games, we might see some more freshmen get on the field. Of course, Jamazin Roberts, the linebacker, he played a lot last week after Willie Eubanks got hurt. He's about 6'2", 240. Yeah, so he's big for a linebacker. I think he's going to be a good player. And then I'm hoping that we get to see Jay Graves Billups. He's an A-back, freshman A-back, who uh, came in highly touted 
And I think he's about ready to get some snaps. And then Melvin Ravenel, a 6'3 cornerback from here in the Charleston area from Goose Creek, has been doing well in practice and could get on the field in these last four games. So uh, I think we might start to see, in my opinion, there's no reason not to give some freshmen some snaps in these last four games and kind of get them ready for next year and, and see what they can do. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's one thing fans can look for. We will be looking, and we'll be reading about it in the Post and Courier. Jeff underscore from the PC is how you can find Jeff on Twitter. And then, again, postandcourier.com. Get the great app. Add it to your smartphone. $4 for four months. I go to mine every day and read all these great stories. Post and Courier does an, a fantastic job, not only with the Citadel coverage, but throughout the low country, really throughout the entire state of South Carolina. Just a, I, I don't know how I've survived all these years without my digital subscription, Jeff, but <laughs> but you you convinced me. So hopefully they'll bonus you come Christmas time there at the PNC. Let's talk about the best SoCon basketball player, at least according to the media. That would be one Hayden Brown of your Citadel Bulldogs. That's right. Hayden Brown picked as the SoCon preseason player of the year. And actually, I think that was by the coaches. I don't think the media picked a I see, okay. preseason player of the year. But anyway, yeah, a great honor for Hayden, 6'5", graduate student now at the Citadel. It's seemingly in his like eighth or ninth season, but not really. And he can actually come back again next year if he wants to. So um, Hayden averaged a double-double last year. He was led the league in rebounding and was number two in scoring. And uh, you know, I hadn't really thought about the chances that he would be the preseason player of the year, but now that it's happened, it seemed pretty obvious <laughs> that he would be uh, the preseason player of the year. Uh, the dogs are picked eighth by the coaches and ninth by the media in the league this year. Uh, they're coming off a rare winning season, actually 14 and 13 last year in the, in the COVID season. So, um, if, if Duger Balcom can find some help uh, for Hayden, uh, maybe they can approach that uh, winning record again. Citadel basketball underway with practice. They've got their opener coming up soon. Jeff, a winning season, barely last year, but it goes in the column as a winning season. Do you expect that same kind of result here in 2021-22? Well, I'm hoping for it, but it's going to be tough. Um, they lost – uh, Caden Rice uh, to Georgetown. I think he was their number two scorer last year. And then Fletcher A.B. to the transfer transfer portal. He was their number three scorer. So it's going to be tough to replace uh, that kind of firepower behind uh, Hayden Brown. I think Hayden's going to get plenty of shots this year. And if someone can step up uh, and, and replace the scoring of Rice and A.B., maybe the, they can approach that winning record again. And the Citadel basketball team opens its season in less than a month. On November 9th, they'll be at the Pitt Panthers with a game that will be televised on the ACC, e, ACC's digital network, that game against the Panthers Tuesday, November 9th at 7 p.m. Then you can see the Bulldogs in their home opener against Morris College. That will be on Friday, November 12th. And then for all of you that are sandwiched somewhere between Columbia and and a place called Greenville Spartanburg, you're in luck. You can go to Clinton, South Carolina, and the Bulldogs will be taking on the Presbyterian Blue Hose, and that game is set for a November 15th tip at 7 p.m. from there in Lawrence County. So, yes, Lawrence County Citadel Club, you better show up there for that one on November 15th. And they, they get to be a part of Coach K's farewell tour. This year, they play a game at Duke at Cameron Indoor Stadium this year. And, of course, this is Coach K's final season. He announced his retirement uh, earlier this year. So that'll be a big a big game, too. They do. The SoCon opener for Coach Duger Balcom's Bulldogs will be December 29th when the Mercer Bears make their way to close out 2021. They find themselves in Charleston against the Bulldogs at McAllister Fieldhouse on that, what, two days before New Year's Eve that's the SoCon opener. All right, Jeff, other sports happenings that we need to know about before we say goodbye to you, sir? Yeah, the women's soccer team won their uh, opening game in the SoCon tournament 
on Tuesday, I believe it was, 4-1 to one over VMI. They go to Furman on Friday in the quarterfinals, and uh, number, Furman is the number two seed in the tournament. And if, if they can win that game, they'll be on to the semifinals, which would be a, a big deal for women's soccer. Um, they lost to Furman 4 to nothing in the regular season, so it might be a tough task. But it's been a really good year for women's soccer. They've won 10 matches this year, and uh, I think they're 10 and 6 right now. So a uh, good year for Citadel football, uh, Citadel soccer. Uh, well, some people might call that football. It is football. Yeah. <laughs> Footy. Now that's Australia. Uh, and I know they got the Columbia graduate that's one of the big players there on that soccer team, and she's definitely helping them alongside some other transfers into the program. All right, so that's what's going on with the women's soccer team. Has the volleyball team, do you know if their season has come to an end? No, they're still a couple of weeks away from their tournament. They're, they're tied for fifth right now in the SOCON. So they, they've also been competitive. So really uh, good to see women's soccer and volleyball sort of on the rise a little bit. They've had some difficult seasons over the years as they try to get women's sports uh, up and running. Of course, it's been a while now, but uh, uh, really good to see the strides that they've been making. Jeff, have you ever heard any conversation – that you at least can talk about publicly about women's basketball at the Citadel? No. Never heard anything about that? Okay. No. Well, it wouldn't require building a new building. I, I, I know that. I don't think it's on the radar screen. Okay. Well, the Citadel and VMI are the only two Division One programs that's like 330 schools that don't have a women's basketball team. Mm hmm I would expect to see lacrosse or something like that okay. before um, women's basketball. I wouldn't mind if there's, again, maybe I'll go build that oil well tonight and, and give the school a couple billion dollars. It'd be neat to see a women's basketball team if they're going to have women's sports. Because I also would like to see a couple more men's sports brought back, like uh, like golf, for example. Golf and, and soccer. Well, used to have men's soccer as well. And maybe a little boxing, although I don't think that's an NCAA sport anymore. Um, but, yeah, that there's there was a couple of programs, unfortunately, shut down. They do and, have a club hockey and club rugby teams that are playing right now as well. Yeah. So, uh, Did you know there's only one NCAA Division One hockey program in the entire South? And that is? The University of Alabama in Huntsville. UAH, the Chargers. Okay, good for them. And that's the only Southern Division I hockey program. It would be neat to see a Citadel hockey team. Unfortunately, their closest game would probably be Huntsville, Alabama. Then they'd be flying all around the country with that, and that's probably not a thing the athletic department wants to be spending money on. Probably not. I, I, I know oh, well, I, know I saw it. I actually went to an Air Force Academy soccer game two years ago out in Colorado Springs, and they were playing a team from Minnesota because there's only a select number of teams that play Division One hockey. So, uh, and that was Bemidji State. I'm sure you've got a T-shirt for them somewhere at your house. Um, I've actually heard of them. Yeah. I wanted to mention this. I uh, requested uh, the contracts from the Citadel for all their future non-conference football games. Okay. So I thought we could run down that. Go for right it. Quick uh, next. Next year, they're playing at Campbell, at App State, which they get $350,000 for. And then they've got a game against Virginia Lynchburg, which is a non-D1 team. Uh, they had to find an opponent to replace South Carolina State because that series got pushed back. So they're going to play for Virginia Lynchburg for the first time. 2023, they're at Georgia Southern, $320,000. They got Campbell at home and they're at SC State. 2024, they're at Charleston Southern. They've got SC State at home, North Greenville, and then they're at Clemson for $475,000. In 2025, they have a non-conference game at Ole Miss, $500,000. And then 2026, a non-conference game at Charlotte, $305,000, and then they're hosting Charleston Southern. So that's a look at the non-conference games that they have scheduled over the next few years. Yeah, and something tells me that uh, long-awaited 
matchup of my two alma maters probably is not going to happen. And that would be that 2025 Ole Miss game, Jeff, because I just don't see with the addition of Texas and Oklahoma to the SEC, I think the SEC is going to likely go to a 10-game conference schedule and they're going to probably get rid of that Ole Miss game, which they'll get money for if they have to cancel. That's a good point, and uh, those kind of games could go away in general <laughs> pretty soon. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. All right, Jeff, always on the beat. Thank you for giving us uh, some of that breaking news on scheduling. And, again, Jeff underscore from the PC is how you can find him. Jeff, we look forward to your coverage of the Citadel and the Mercer Bears. Have a great rest of your week. We'll see you back here next week. All right, John, thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you all for tuning in to Citadel Gray Line, a production of CRM Sports. If you know that trivia question, 843-779-8496. What current Charleston TV meteorologist was once in the broadcast booth of the Citadel's radio network coverage? We'll give you a chance to answer that, and we'll announce you if you're the lucky winner on next week's Citadel Gray Line, a production of CRM Sports. Y'all have a great rest of your week. 